Hi, Rapstein of Linden Associates with your metals market update. And this is for Tuesday, the 6th of August, 2019. And we're just after 4.05 p.m. Central Daylight Time. In the gold market, while you were up $7.70, just at the end of the day, you were about 20, 30 cents away from the day's high. Remember, they settle the market. And settle means they determine a, a final price where they're going to, at the end of the trading session, make that the price that the market settled at. And it's different because they do that at 12.30 Chicago time, and yet they trade till 4 p.m. I don't agree with that, but that's how they do it. And you were higher than this by about $2. Silver was a bit higher, but nothing like the gold market. Gold is still gaining on the silver. You were up in the dollar, and obviously the market is looking hard at the stock market, but it did not weigh negative on the gold. What gold was also looking at were bonds and notes and probably looking at a pause in the trade war, but you still have at work lower energy prices. You're not getting much of a correction on the interest rate sector either. So when we take a look at gold, how can you argue? You're up uh, nearly 2% for the first two days of this week. This is a chart of just closes, and you're up $26 already. When you come to a daily bar chart, this is the highest move that we've recently had in gold in a very long time. The pattern is one where this all came alive from this day. Do you see that outside day down? And if you go back to this day that it occurred on last Thursday, I think I was saying this makes, if you take that out, a difficult chart because now I'm looking to see where this market might head in time. And you can see it's moving higher, but how do you predict where it might be going? And prediction's always difficult, but you use your technical tools. Let me explain it. We can see that the 18-day average of closes is the key moving average in play here. It is the number that, as the market falls back to it, it seems to be holding. Go to the 200-day moving average in the Dow, the S&P, or the NASDAQ on the daily chart. You tell me what you see there, and I'll talk about that in my next video, in fact. The Bollinger Band is what we're over. So when you get over the high of an outside day down, I'm normally looking for the closest of a moving average as the next target or a Bollinger Band. Because this all happened in this sequence where you've got the 100-day uh, average of the market, the 18 here, that's not the number that's in play. The additional thing is you've got one, Day. Today was over the Bollinger Band, yesterday over the Bollinger Band, the day before over it, not the day before. So I've got three days in a row. The Bollinger Band theory is that 95% of the time the market will trade within these bands. I take liberty with that and I say that each consecutive day subtracts one of those percentage points. Now you're liable to say, or what happens on the sixth day? I'm using rules of thumb. I'm not saying to go short at a Bollinger Band anyways. The idea here is if you're over it, we're looking to see where might you be able to come in if you're bullish on a better price, or if you're long, maybe you're looking to come out for whatever reason. And if you're short, why when you're making new highs on the market? But I'll leave that up to you because this is not about telling you what to do. As I view the chart, the bias is up because you're over the 18-day average. You've got a market that has not got a swing line pattern that's either. You've got a lower and low, higher high, but visually we can see you broke out of this sideways action right here. And when you did that, you've been moving to the upside. In terms of momentum, you are overbought. So is the market ripe for a stall or a pullback? Absolutely, since you're overbought and over the Bollinger Band. That's where I'll leave that. In GLD, this is a much cleaner chart. And the reason it's cleaner is this chart, GLD, anything in the stock market, finishes at 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, right? It doesn't close earlier like we do in the futures. So this market, if we look at that key day, it was an outside day up complete opposite of the other, and it's been moving ever since then. Now you're overbought, you have two days over the upper Bollinger Band, so it gives me a 3% chance as I view it that the market might move to the right-hand side. 
It's got a base under it. The market's still in a bullish configuration. And as we get to the GDX, the problem is you're into the Bollinger top and fighting a market that's not got a pattern of bullishness. You got nothing actually. You got a lower and low, higher high pattern. I'm not blind. I can see that the market's been going up and I can see another thing. The 18 day average is as a whole held this market, but this break sort of destroyed the bullishness that you had in the other charts. The gold-silver ratio has been on a corrective mode where silver is not keeping up with gold on this. Now it did earlier, it went from about 93 and a half down to towards this 86 level. Now it's gained back about half of what it lost. If it goes beyond this much more, maybe this was just a, a correction and the market's going to get bullish again. But right now you're so close to that 18-day average, I don't think you can make that decision. On the silver chart, if we take a look, you're in overbought territory. As long as either of or if both the slow stochastics are over 70, but both not over 80, I consider the market overbought. What else? We have a pattern of consistent lower highs and a lower low. We also see that support keeps coming in at the 18-day average. It's done it three of the past four days, and you can see that there. So now the question is, can it get back to that number to regroup itself? What would turn the swing line up would be getting over 1659 and could put into play this number. The dilemma is you'd be overbought if you did that. You're overbought already, you would just stay there is my guess. The copper market, I call it Dr. Copper. This was what you call sideways action. Here's a market that's come down. The question is between this 250, 255 area, can the market get its feet under it? If it can't, then the next zone could be the two and a quarter area. So you've had now three days in a row of closes under the Bollinger Band or yeah, basically under it at this point. Will you move to the right hand side and you are oversold. Trend down, bias down, momentum down, but oversold. Platinum market is fought, fighting a battle at the 18 to the 100 day average of closes. Now, even if you were to take out 863.50, I doubt you would turn the momentum back up the way that it's pointing down here. If the market closes or gets under 845.30, because the trend has already got lower highs, lower lows, that would be a new low for the move and it could move the market to 832. So battleground where you've been for four days, the 100 and the 18 day average of closes. In the palladium market, the market has found some footing against the 100-day average of closes in the lower Bollinger Band. To negate the downside trend as set up by the swing line, the market has to take out 1444.80. The supports the 100-day average at 1490, let's call it 60, down to 1407.80 or at 1437 right now. And last in the dollar index, you fell down yesterday on all that currency war talk when we declared China, as you know, a currency manipulator down to the 18-day average. And as you can see, the market is still holding on to that number. We've corrected in the market an overbought condition. So now the question is, what can it do with swing lines? What's the next move going to be? That's where I think you're at, trying to make that decision. One of the things that we use to help in those decision-making process is something called a price count. Now think of a price count as sideways action similar to what you're seeing and if you break out of it on a certain formation, and we teach you what the formation is because not only can you get the chart of the day but when you sign up if you'd like to get the video series we put together as to how to do this and if you have our QT charts we will give you by the way, a free uh, trial to it if you haven't had it before. It has this in it. You follow what I teach, you put it on, and I think you'll find it pretty interesting. Go to our website, www.irapstein.com. Click on education or research if you want a little bit there about it. But the bigger area is right on our front page where we have our free offers. Click on any of those. Fill out what you'd like to get as a free offer, including this. We'll be certain to email everything to you. I'm Ira Epstein. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.